Hi, this is Alex Fernandez with Bud and Doug Walters Auto Sales in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Today I'll be covering the features inside of this 2019 Subaru Outback Touring. We'll start by talking about the touchscreen, the buttons on either side of it. We'll work our way down to the climate control settings, then move to the center console, and we'll work our way over to the steering wheel, the stocks behind it, that screen up in the gauge cluster you see there, and the buttons that we have to our left as well. Coming back to the touchscreen, the page we're seeing right now is the home page. We access that by pushing either this touch button on the side of the screen or the one on the screen itself in the upper left hand corner. That'll always take us back to this view, being able to see the different applications or icons that we can access in this screen. We have phone, map for the built-in navigation, car info, which shows things like average fuel economy and average speed. We have media, which would be um, CD, Bluetooth, USB, or auxiliary audio. We have apps, which gives us access to things like Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which when plugged in to the compatible smartphones in the USB port of the car, you're able to access the functions from your phone on the screen of the car here, such as navigation, phone calls and text messages, and music or podcasts. Going back here, we have Subaru Starlink, which is a um, subscription-based service from Subaru that has things like roadside assistance and uh, vehicle diagnostics. We have our settings, and we have radio. We're going to start with the radio because almost everybody listens to it. We can press that here on the screen or just to the side there. That'll open up whatever audio we're listening to with the radio, be that AM, FM, or satellite. You'll see along the left side of the screen here, we can choose between AM, FM, and satellite. Along the bottom of the screen, we have our presets. We have six slots, and there are three pages total, so we have 18 slots available. And you're able to mix and match AM, FM, and satellite stations all within the same list there. To set a station, simply press and hold and wait for the beep. To choose or change your station, we can use either the seek buttons here or the tuning dial right there to change that station. We have sound settings here on the screen. We can press that and that opens the bass, the mid-range, and the treble, and then we can actually adjust where the audio is coming from as well and drag that sound around there. Up in the top we have the scan button, we have replay which allows us to actually rewind the radio if we've been listening to it for a period of time. And then we have high definition radio which is just a clearer, crisper signal when it's available. Going back to the home page here, we're going to go to phone. There's no devices connected right now, and it just gave us a prompt asking if we'd like to add a new device, in this case we're not going to do that. But to do so, you would have simply accepted that prompt by pressing yes and then open the Bluetooth settings on your compatible phone to walk through the setup process of adding the phone to the Bluetooth system. Once that's done, you'll be able to make and receive phone calls in the vehicle hands-free, and it will sync up your contacts and your call history so you have access to that stuff while you're in the vehicle as well. Going back to the home page, and we're going to go to map for our navigation here. You'll see it shows us just a map display of where we're at currently here at the lot. And if we press the menu button, we're able then to search uh, for a destination by entering an address, searching through uh, lists of points of interest or recent destinations or favorite destinations that we've saved. If we go to an address here, simply punch in the street number, street name, and if we press search, It'll take what we've typed so far. It's going to show us the available options based on that. So 1600 South Drake is our address here at the lot. And you'll see that that gives us those options as destinations. Going back to the home page here. We're going to go to apps for a quick second. You'll see Apple CarPlay and Android Auto here to the right. And they are grayed out because we don't have uh, one of those phones plugged into the car right this second. We also have AHA, Sirius XM, Travelink, Pandora, and Subaru Starlink. 
Pandora and AHA are both internet radio applications that you can run on your smartphone, and when it's connected to the tr vehicle, you're able to use those um, through those icons. We could also use the traditional Bluetooth link instead of using these specific applications for that feature. Well, the Subaru Starlink is a subscription-based service, like I mentioned earlier, and Sirius XM Travel Link, again, is also a subscription-based service. Going back to our homepage, the last thing there is settings, and you'll see we have different categories, general settings, sound, phone, navigation, and vehicle, where we're able, where we're able to change features or functions um, based on those categories. Working our way down to the climate control here, we have dual zone climate control. You'll see we have driver side control and passenger side control here. And you're able to adjust those just by rotating that dial clockwise or counterclockwise. Right now, the two zones are synced. That basically means that the driver's side controls both temperature zones right now. If we'd like the two temperatures to become separate, all you have to do is simply change that passenger temperature, and you'll notice that sync button light has turned off, and they can be adjusted independently of each other. Your fan speed's gonna be right in the middle here. We have the left and right toggle there to increase or decrease that fan speed. Right below that, we have the mode button which would change which set of vents the air is coming out of. To the left there, we have the on-off switch for the climate control. We have auto mode, which allows you to set the temperature, and the car will take care of the rest, such as fan speed and vent location. We have our recirculate mode, the sync button. We have our front defroster, our rear defroster and heated side view mirrors. We have air conditioning, and we have a max AC button, which is simply a shortcut to turn the fan speed all the way up turn the temperature all the way down, and turn on air conditioning and recirculate modes all at once. This vehicle is also equipped with heated seats for the driver and passenger here, and you'll see that those have three settings of high, medium, and low. Coming back to the center console here, we have our parking brake, which is electronic. Pull on the bottom to engage, and put your foot on the brake pedal, and push on the top of the switch to disengage. Two buttons here we have our X mode and uh, hill hold assist. Uh, the X mode is sort of an off-road button for Subarus. Um, if you're in some two-tracking kind of terrain or something off-road like that, that's when you most often use that button. What I'd recommend is just forwarding ahead with Subarus all-wheel drive without using that button unless you get into something really, really nasty. Working our way over to the steering wheel here, we have our cruise control settings here. Our cruise control is adaptive cruise in this vehicle. So we can turn the cruise on by pushing this button here. And you'll see that display in the gauge cluster come up. Once we have that cruise turned on, we're able to get up to speed and then pull down to set that speed. Once the speed has been set, we can push up to the plus sign to accelerate, push down to the minus sign to decelerate. And because this vehicle has adaptive cruise control, that means we can adjust not only the speed that the vehicle maintains, but also the distance that this vehicle will maintain with the cars in front of it. When we do so with this button here and the one beneath it, and you'll see as we press those buttons, we have four intervals of distance. The idea being that the car will hold the speed that you've set unless a slower vehicle gets in front of you and enters the distance threshold that we've set. Once the car has entered that threshold, it will slow your car down and re-establish that distance and hold the speed necessary to do so until they have moved out of your way and then your car will resume its previous speed. This button here is our lane keep assist. And again, you'll see an icon there in the right side of the screen showing up when we turn that on. With clearly marked road lines, if the vehicle detects that you are drifting out of your lane, it will attempt to nudge you back into your lane with a small steering correction. Down below here, we have the heated steering wheel, which is unique to the Touring model in the Outbacks. Looking at the left side of the wheel, we have volume control for our audio. We have left and right buttons, which allow us to cycle through uh, presets that we've set on the radio or skip a track if we were listening to a CD or Bluetooth audio or something along those lines. We have the source button here, which allows us to cycle through the different available sources of audio, both AM, FM, and satellite radio. CD, Bluetooth, etc. Below here we have phone buttons for that hands-free calling system, a button to answer, and a button to hang up or decline. And just above that we have the voice command button, which we can press and tell the vehicle to place a call using either the contact name or 
phone number. Below that, we have three buttons, an up and a down arrow, and an information slash set button. Those buttons pull from the back, and they control the screen up in front here, where we're able to see things like audio information, compass display, tire pressure for all four tires, digital speed, uh, time of current drive and distance traveled. We get to see average fuel economy and distance to empty. And we can also see fuel economy for our trips, which we can change using that trip button right down there. You can push and hold to reset those values there. Looking behind the steering wheel, we have stocks for our windshield wipers here. A single bump up on that stock does one swipe for the front windshield. If we click it down, we have then intermittent, which we can adjust here. And then we have low speed and high speed. For the rear wiper, we simply rotate the end of that stock there. We have the intermittent position and then the on position. And then for the sprays for those windshields, for the front spray, pull that stock towards you. And for the rear spray, rotate either all the way down to the bottom and hold, or rotate all the way up to the top and hold for that rear spray. Looking behind the left side of the steering wheel, we have the headlight and fog lamps, as well as high beams and bright blinkers here. These headlights are automatic. They're set to that position right now, which means they'll come on at night once it's dark enough out and turn off during the day, leaving you with daytime running lights. This vehicle also has fog lights, which we have there. You'll see an icon up here in the gauge cluster if those are turned on. Blinkers function as normal. Brights push away from you to turn them on and pull towards you to flash them. This vehicle is equipped with automatic high beams, which means they will come on so long as there is not another vehicle coming at you, at which point it would shut them off and then turn them back on once that vehicle is gone. Looking down below to the left here, we have the button for the powered rear lift gate. Push that to open and close it. This dial here rotates and adjusts the brightness of the backlighting of our gauges and everything inside when the headlights have come on. The powered rear lift gate of this vehicle is equipped with a memory height function, which you're able to toggle on and off with that switch here. Uh, if you had a low hanging garage or were a little bit shorter, you can reduce the maximum height of that powered lift gate with that switch there. Down below we have the off switch for the traction control, which is on by default every time that you start the vehicle. We have the off switch for the blind spot monitoring, which is present in these glossy black plastic pieces on the side view mirrors that will illuminate orange when somebody's in your blind spot. We have the off switch for the lane departure warning. So again, with clearly marked road lines, if you drift over that line, it will beep at you to indicate you have done so. And the last one here is the off switch for the forward collision mitigation braking. If you were coming up on a stopped vehicle and were not slowing down for whatever reason, uh, the car would first attempt to alert you and get your attention. And if you did not apply the brakes at that point, it would try to intervene by applying the brakes itself. And you, or again, you're able to turn all those features off if you wouldn't like to use them. Looking at the door here, we do have driver seat memory presets. We have two slots for that. So we're able to save two different positions for this driver's side seat. And looking at the door here, we have window switches, which are all auto up down. We have our door locks, our window locks, and our mirror adjustments. Simply twist to choose the side and then use that like a joystick to adjust the mirrors. Looking up above us, we do have our dome lights. We have a switch to tell the doors opening to turn those dome lights on. And then when you close your door, the dome lights will shut off. We have our sunroof controls. We have the tilt up and tilt down feature and then the open and close feature here. And then the shade on that is just a manual shade if you want to open it or close it without moving the glass. And you'll see we have an SOS and an information button there. Those are linked up with that Subaru Starlink feature. Again, a subscription-based service from Subaru. Looking at the underside of the rear view mirror here, we do have programmable garage door remote buttons. And you can program your remote so that you don't have to keep that in the car with you any longer. We also have a compass display in that mirror as well. Those are the primary features of this 2019 Subaru Outback Touring. If you have any more questions, please refer to us at waltersautos.com. 
or feel free to call at 269-375-7008 with any further questions or to make an appointment. Thank you.